brothers and sisters, the word Advent comes from the Latin terms adventus, means arrival or coming. Particularly, the coming of something has great importance. Advent season then is both a time of joy filled anticipatory celebration of the arrival of Jesus Christ and a preparatory period for repentance, meditation, and penance. Advent has a two part characteristic. In the first part of Advent, up till December 16, the reading inside the Mass helped to focus the anticipation, expectation, hope and promise of the expect return of Christ in the second coming. Last Sunday, this Sunday, and the next Sunday fall into the first part of Advent. In the second part of Advent, from December 17 to December 24, we focus our preparation for the celebration of the Nativity of our Lord at Christmas. The first reading taken from the book of Prophet Isaiah. It is the third Messianic prophecy as a prediction of the first coming of Jesus the Messiah. A shoot shall come out from the stem stump of Jesse, and a branch go out of his root. Jesse is the father of King David. Indeed, Jesus come from the stump of Jesse. The royal authority of the house of David was dormant for 600 years when Jesus came as King and Messiah. It appeared like a bare, bitter tree stump, robbed of its trunk and top, and it looked like though the stump will never bear any fruit anymore, but a small shoot sprout out from the root of this dry stump, which is the Davidic dynasty. When Jesus came forth, it was like a new green branch coming from an apparent dead stump. The branch that comes from the apparent dead stump isn't just barely alive. It is full of life and full of the spirit of the law with his sevenfold gifts. Wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, and fear of God will appear in the promised Messiah. Righteousness shall be the bell around his waist and faithfulness the bell around his lawn. The quality of righteousness and faithfulness are so close to Jesus that they are like bells around his waist. Righteousness and faithfulness are the standard of how Messiah exercised his kingship. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie with the kid. When the Messiah reigns, nature will be transformed. No longer will there be predator among the animal, and it seems that all animals will be herbivores, pine eating only. Not only with the way animals relate to each other be changed, but the way they relate to human will be changed. A little child will be safe and able to lead a wolf or a leopard or a lion. Even the danger of corporal and vipers will be gone. The prophet tried to illustrate this type of peace when Messiah reigned. He will restore the original order of all things. <clears throat> the prophet is to refer the peace enjoyed by our original ancestor in the paradise before they sin. In our gospel today, John the, Pap <clears throat> John the Baptist proclaimed, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. There has been no prophet in Israel for 400 years, but the people has no hesitation in accepting John as a prophet because he was like a burning, burning torch, summoning men to righteousness, a signpost to point men to God. The Israel expect Elijah to return prior to the coming of Messiah. John's coughing of camel hair with a leather belt around his waist identify him as the fulfillment of that prophecy, and Christ himself confirmed John's role 
in chapter 17 of the gospel where he say, I tell you that Elijah has already come. John's message wasn't, you are a sinner, you need to repent. John's main message was, Messiah, the King is coming. The call, of, the call to repentance was the response to the news that the King and his kingdom was coming. The kingdom of heaven is a God center, God controlled life. John wants people to experience such a life. Everyone who wants to experience this ring of God need to make a radical change in his or her life. We cannot come under the sovereign rule of God without a change of attitude, a change of heart, and a change of lifestyle. John's baptism by water was an external expression of repentance when he insists on was the internal expression, a repentance that bore real fruit, a turning from worthy value combined with generosities and love. Although John's message was not comforting, people from Jerusalem and all Judea were going to him, tell us there were many people who recognized their sinfulness, their need to get ready for the Messiah and were willing to do something about it. One thing to point out, the baptism administered by John the Baptist was not the Christian baptism that the church administered. Christian baptism is much more. Through it, we are buried with Christ in his death and raised with him to new life. Christian baptism cleanses us of both original sin and actual sin some committed up to that point. It incorporates us into Christ as member of his body, initiates us into life in Christ and his church. It restores to us the supernatural life of God and infuses in us the grace of gift of the Holy Spirit. John Saphiria warned the Pharisee and the Sadducee, you brought of wipers. As the Pharisee and Sadducees may, come, may have come for baptism with the ostentation that characterized their other religious activity, they were showing the world how ready they were for Messiah, though they were not truly repentant. John reminded them that the real repentance will show itself in life. It has to be a matter of living repentance, not just talking repentance. John's message was a call for radical conversion, a demand for self-denial, sacrifice, and loving service to others. We may have to put an X on the root of resentment and bias in our heart. We may have to winnow out our greed and overindulgence and we may have to burn the shaft of our impatience. Brothers and sisters, have you stopped putting up a manger or a Christmas tree at your home yet? Have you finished 50% of your Christmas shopping? Have you prepared and be ready for the Lord's second coming? If you have any hesitation, answer the last question. In a few moments, we will receive the Eucharist, the real presence of the Lord. We should open our heart and thank Him to come to our world 2,000 years ago for our salvation. We should also ask Him to guide us to prepare, to prepare the way for His second coming during this Advent season. <laughs>